Hello, preschool friends. Welcome back. We are now doing part three of our big book of stars and planets. Exploring space. Powerful rockets, spacecraft, and telescopes help us find out about stars and planets. The first spacecraft was the Sputnik 1, a Russian satellite launched in 1957, and it flew around the Earth. In 1969 to 1972, the U.S. Apollo missions took astronauts to the moon. The command service module, the CSM spacecraft, flew them there. So this is the Sputnik up here. And then this is the Apollo right here. Probes use cameras and other instruments to study planets, moons, and other things in space. The Cassini probe was launched in 2005. This is the Cassini right here. Space telescopes orbit the Earth and they make things that are very far away look a lot bigger and clearer. Astronauts wear protective spacesuits. The lunar module separated from the CSM and flew astronauts to the moon's surface. And this is the Hubble Space Telescope that was launched in 1990. The International Space Station, or the ISS, is a huge spacecraft where astronauts live in space. It's made up of 159 separate parts. Launch vehicles are powerful rockets used to blast probes and other spacecraft into outer space. This is the Soyuz launch vehicle. The Soyuz spacecraft is packed inside. Hot burning fuel pushes the rocket away from its launch pad. And this is the Soyuz spacecraft. Radio telescopes use big radio dishes to detect distant planets, stars, and galaxies. And these are the ALMA radio telescopes in Chile. I have to turn this one the other way. Changing it up on us. Launched in 1977, the Voyager 1 probe took the first close-up images of Jupiter and Saturn. Now, it's the furthest spacecraft from Earth. It might even have left our solar system. New Horizons probe due to reach the dwarf planet Pluto in 2015. And it will be the first probe to send detailed pictures of Pluto's surface back to the Earth. The Cassini probe flew to Saturn and dropped a smaller probe, Huygens, into Saturn's moon, Titan. Probes have explored asteroids too. The Hayabusa probe was made to photograph and take samples from the Itakawa asteroid. Titan is covered in thick clouds, and its probe flew down under Titan's clouds to find more about its surface. Soon, companies will be taking tourists into space. The Lynx X Core space plane is still being built. It will fly tourists 2,000 kilometers or 6,000 miles above the Earth. The Kepler Space Telescope has been searching for planets outside our solar system in the Milky Way. The Hubble Space Telescope uses large, woo, large mirrors to create clear pictures of distant things, such as galaxies. This antenna sends pictures back to Earth. The ISS has up to six astronauts on board it at one time. They're doing lots of experiments and testing what effect living 
living in space has on the human body. Solar panels gather energy from the sun to power the ISS. And this astronaut is on a spacewalk outside the ISS. He is doing repairs. This is a docking station here. Can you all see that? The Soya spacecraft flies away from the launch vehicle to the ISS. It docks and attaches to the ISS so astronauts can get out on and off. This is called a nose cone. Do you see how it's, this rocket is coming apart? The Soyuz launch vehicle soars away from the Earth and the nose cone blows off and releases the spacecraft underneath. Astronauts float back to Earth in the Soyuz reentry module. Roving around, the surface of Mars is cold, dusty, and dry, but scientists think that there was water there at one time, and maybe even life. They've sent robots to Mars to find out more. Landers stay in one position to take pictures and do experiments. In 1976, the Viking 1 lander was the first spacecraft to land on Mars. And rovers are vehicles that drive around Mars. They're controlled by scientists on Earth. This rover is called Opportunity. Solar panels on the, on the vehicle turn the sun's energy into power. And this robot arm is collecting rock samples. Curiosity drills into the rock and then scoops up the leftover dust to test it for signs of water. This one here. Curiosity was packed inside a spacecraft parachute then it slowed down the craft. Thrusters slowed it down even more before the rover was gently lowered onto the surface. And this rover called Curiosity landed in a deep crater on Mars in August 2012. A laser blasts the rocks into a fine mist, and the mist is tested to see what the rock is made from. Can you guys see that? It's pretty neat. An antenna receives instructions from scientists on Earth about where to drive next. The night sky. If you look up at the sky on a clear night, you can see lots and lots of stars and many other things too. The brightest stars can be grouped into imaginary pictures called constellations. There are 88 constellations in, to in total. Sirius, or the dog star, is the brightest star in the night sky. Oh. <laughs> This one right here. This is called Canis Major, or the Great Dog Constellation. One of the most famous constellations is Orion the Hunter, named Orion the Hunter, named after a hero in Greek mythology. The stars of Orion's sword are actually the Orion Nebula. The star Polaris always points north. This is the crux or the Southern Cross constellation. And the Big Dipper is also known as the Plow. You'll see different things depending on where you are on Earth. The moon looks as if it's shining, but it isn't. The sunlight reflecting off the moon's surface is creating this light. As the moon moves around the earth, the sun lights up different parts of the moon, and the other part is in shadow, so it looks dark to us. 
This misty stripe here is the brightest part of the Milky Way galaxy, and this is what it looks like from Earth. Some planets appear in the night sky as bright stars. Venus can often be seen close to the horizon. You might see the ISS crossing the sky. It looks like a bright moving star. And when the solar wind hits the Earth's atmosphere, sometimes it creates a, <laughs> creates a beautiful light show called an aurora. How beautiful, friends. Well, thank you all so much for learning about outer space with me. And I hope you all have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, friends.